Welcome to this, the conclusion of Unit 6. Um, this will be our last of our formal wrap-ups. Um, we will try to do one more uh, as we spend a, a little bit less time uh, checking out the forums and actively participating in them, but we'll still be there checking things out from time to time, and we'll try to bring some of those of, to your attention um, in another one of these updates uh, some uh, weeks down the line. Um, we will be keeping the course open, so you should feel free to continue in the course. We know many people uh, are, have only made it through a portion of the course, and we want to make sure that everybody who would like to finish has the opportunity to do so. So the course will be open for many more weeks into the summer, um, so you'll have time to, to finish then. And we know that since there will be lots of people trying to do the same, you'll likely be able to get feedback from other people in the course who will be existing there. Um, I think some of the interesting things this week were actually from the activity break. So if you're, if you're not done with the course, or even if you are, um, this is a good place to look. It's about quick advice. Uh, and this quick advice is about the process of designing and, and creating educational games. And I'll, let me point out a few of those. Um, the first one was from KD Burkett. Uh, and uh, I'm going to summarize this one as design-based implementation research. Um, it was a theme that I saw in a lot of the posts about really getting to know your audience, what, who they are, what are their problems, and how can games sort of uh, mesh with those, not necessarily forcing the game to fit, fit their problem uh, and not sort of making up problems that don't necessarily, um, that, they, that they don't necessarily have. So uh, it's really getting to know your audience. It was a theme we saw in a lot of them. That was a good post about that. Um, also considering the scope of the work, making sure that the sort of development is not, is not too large, um, either in time for the audience or in terms of what you're trying to do um, and how long that will take. Um, I also will, uh, will quote there, this was from uh, jlearner1433, um, remember slapping points and badges on a PowerPoint does not make it a game. Uh, VMV uh, had a good, uh, good comment also about not let, letting technology drive the development. You want to make sure that um, what you're doing is, again, serving the needs of your audience and matches with the game and should map, match with a digital game. In many cases, um, as we saw in the course, uh, good uh, board games or paper-based games can be alternatives as well. Uh, John from Dublin uh, had some nice uh, comments here as well. Um, check uh, that if something is a game, can really help to by reducing the friction of the learning process. So really think about what's, what people are trying to learn and whether the game can actually help, uh, help out in that, in that process. Uh, our own, our own Rickaroo from here at MIT, who's also a participant in the course, uh, talked about backwards design. Um, it was something that we didn't mention a lot uh, in the course. We mentioned only briefly. Uh, so it's a good post to look at, which mentions this idea of backwards design, starting with your, a lot of your goals and, and working backwards from there. Um, has some commonalities with, uh, with evidence-centered design. Uh, and finally, Kathleen Hayes, uh, which I can summarize as, talking with people is great. Uh, again, getting to know your audience, and what better way to know your audience than to actually talk with them. So good, good advice. Uh, definitely take a look through that. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time um, talking about the, the projects. A lot of people are still sort of in the finishing stages of their projects. Um, but we see Jason15 uh, has, uh, has uh, finished uh, Crazy Fruit Market. Um, so that's, uh, that's worth checking out if you haven't seen that. Um, we mentioned it in a previous week. Um, uh, Mayan on the Behavior Detective uh, is, also, is also nearing completion. Um, uh, but let me, let me point out a couple that we ha may not have seen before. So uh, Fran Sachs uh, is talking, uh, there's a color matching game. And uh, this color matching game, there's some really nice reflection on, in terms of uh, the development process, uh, how she used game blocks, uh, what the process for, for, for sort of matching the tool to the, to the learner, to the, to the content area, how all that works together. Um, so there's some nice discussion there um, and some nice follow-up on that um, from other folks as well. Uh, and also Christian Bargetz um, had a post, and this was a nice one I'll comment because it was actually in the uh, math games forum, so it was in one of the groups that had been created. This is a pretty sophisticated pipe network game, so you may not have delved into some of those other forums, like the, like the math games forum, particularly if you're not in doing math games. It's worth checking this one out as well. Um, so with that, uh, I'll say thanks for participating in the course. Um, I'll be looking for you online in the forums um, for your, some of your activity in the coming weeks. Um, so please, uh, please continue to engage there and share some of these wonderful games. And uh, we hope to see you in another course as well. Thanks.